Today on Delmarva Life, we're going down to the southernmost town in Maryland, the seafood capital of the world, the Somerset County community of Crisfield. It's just a great place to come. You know, you, you feel like you're home. You really do feel like you're home. And that home has a rich history, one that its people are proud to tell. People should come and learn about it because it's, it's impactful. Today we explore some of the hidden gems in Crisfield. We're, we're definitely a destination area. You don't, you don't happen across this by accident. And places that are becoming all the buzz. It was so moving to see this place really blossom as a community, as an art community. From the beautiful backdrops. We have one of the best marinas on the bay. To some of the fabulous food. Change is not always a bad thing. Change is a good thing. So sit back and relax as we present Delmarva Life Small Town Series, Crisfield. The city of Crisfield in Somerset County is known as the seafood capital of the world, a city that was built on oysters both figuratively and literally. Yeah, as we'll learn later on in the show, much of the 3.6 square miles of the city has a solid base of oyster shells. Take a look at this picture. It was taken in 1891, an oyster house surrounded by shells. So then, if the world is our oyster, Crisfield is the pearl. That's right. It's a good story right there. The first inhabitants of what is now Crisfield were the Animessex Indians. Their small fishing village was known as Animessex Neck. In 1663, Benjamin Summers, a settler from England, arrived here and eventually patented plots of land that became known as Summers Cove. Yeah, Summers Cove soon became a major East Coast distribu distribution center for seafood, but it was this man right here that would become the namesake of the town. John W. Crisfield was a Princess Anne attorney and in 1866 was instrumental in bringing the Eastern Shore Railroad to Summers Cove. The railroad bolstered the economy. Six years later, the town was formally incorporated and renamed Crisfield. Now there are at least seven Victorian houses in the historic area around Main Street and Somerset Avenue of Crisfield, all of which have some type of a ghost story attached to them. There was said to once be an entire ghost family appear to a visitor at Gossamer on Somerset Avenue, a man, a woman, and two little girls. Oh. Oh yeah, another story indicates the spirit of a child attached to the home of Richard Christie, whose son died at an early age after a brief illness. Now the Ananias Crockett House on Main Street previously had occupants who said that they could hear a choir when it rained and certain doors would not stay locked. Mm. And the Corbin Library in Crisfield is the only library in America that also serves as a tomb. Now, a lot of Crisfield's business district was destroyed by a huge fire back in 1928. The fire was reported to have begun in the Crisfield Opera House. At the time of the fire, the uh, Opera House was filled with an audience viewing the 8.30 p.m. show of Love, starring John Gilbert and Greta Garbo. The uh, Arcade Theater was built a few years after that, assumed a prominent position in the social life of Crisfield with weekly movies and stage entertainment. Pretty interesting. Now, when the Depression hit the county, or the country rather, in the 1930s, two Crisfield brothers created a booming business helping local hunters. Do you know who those brothers are? Let's see, I'll bet it's them right <laughs> there. Yeah, Steve and Lim Ward <laughs> carved duck decoys and along the way invented a prestigious new art form which would earn them unsought fame and acclaim. As kids, the wards were poor but passionate duck hunters. It's estimated that the wards produced 20,000 birds over their long careers. They've earned honorary college degrees, a National Heritage Award from the National Endowment for the Arts, and an entire museum named after them in Salisbury. I know you know the name of that one. I believe I do, yeah. but I bet they never thought one day after we carved these decoys, we're going to have our very own museum in Salisbury. They were actually barbers by trade, both really? of them, and they continued to be barbers throughout 
their career as duck carvers. So this was a little side thing. Mm -hmm. How a little about side that? thing that turned out well for them. Now, Taws, that's a pretty big name around here. Other famous people from Crisfield share that name. Here at WBOC, we are quite fond of Crisfield legend Scorchy Taws. Mm -hmm. Lived his entire life in Crisfield. Everybody there knew Scorchy Taws. Scorchy was 50 years old when he started the Outdoor Report at WBOC. At the time, he was already one of the most respected photographers of the entire Mid-Atlantic. Well, we lost Scorchy in 2007, but his legacy lives on with his grandson, Andrew, who hosts Outdoors Del Marva. And does a wonderful That's job. job. Yes. Love having him here. Another famous Taws from Crisfield is the 54th governor, Mar uh, Maryland governor, J. Miller Taws. Taws was born in Crisfield in 1894 and earned a living working in lumbering and canning firms that were owned by his father. His political career began in 1930 when he was elected as clerk of the court for Somerset County. Taz would go on to be elected comptroller of Maryland and eventually governor in 1958. He held that position until 1967. Now, in the mid-70s, Taz was treasurer of Maryland. I think I read somewhere that he was the only one to be elected to the top three slots. Top three slots, yeah. Uh, a little later in the show, we're actually going to visit his namesake, which is the J. Millard Taz Museum. And there you go. The unofficial kickoff to Maryland's political season happens in Crisfield. It's named after Governor Taz. The J. Millard Taz Crab and Clam Bake is a must-attend, see, and be seen political institution in Crisfield. It's, uh, it's equal parts of seafood and schmooze. <laughs> uh, happens every July at Summers Cove Marina. And nobody, the heat doesn't bother them one nope, bit. Not a bit. They just want their seafood. Well, in true Crisfield style, seafood is a huge way to wrap up the summer as well. The National Hard Crab Derby is a week long celebration that wraps up Labor Day weekend. The unique crab themed festival features crab races, crab cooking, and picking contests, carnival rides, arts and crafts, vendors, live entertainment, beauty pageants, a parade, fireworks. You get the picture. It's also a time when local watermen can show off their skills with the annual boat docking competition. Working watermen put their work boats into high gear to see who can maneuver the boat into a space and secure it the fastest. And it's so much fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, it's time to dive into and really get to know all about Crisfield. We start by highlighting some of the major players in what has turned Crisfield into the quaint community it is today. We'll show you next. Crisfield wouldn't be what it is today without its history, so that's also on today's lineup. We're going to hear how a group is working to preserve Crisfield's history and heritage and you are invited to see it. Artists are also invited to get involved with Crisfield's Art and Entertainment District. It's a budding concept, and the passion behind it is what will contribute to its success. We will make that connection. You'll find plenty of art outside in Crisfield, particularly at Jane's Island State Park. Connect with nature, relax, camp, get on the water, whatever you want to do. We'll show you why Jane's Island is the place to do it. We'll also show you why Summers Cove Marina is so much more than a place to dock the boat. Think of it as a family-friendly destination, one that has you covered as soon as you step foot onto the property. And a whole bunch of foots are going to be going to the, <laughs> running to Bubby's Wing Shack. Wait till you see the variety on the menu and hear the touching story of why the Bubby's team wants to serve you. We are looking forward to learning all about Crisfield in this small town series. We'll be right back. Del Marva Life is brought to you by Peninsula Regional Medical Center. Honored to serve the entire Del Marva Peninsula since 1897. The law offices of Tunnel and Razor, Spicer Brothers Construction, Gateway Subaru, and AA Companies.